Welcome everybody to the video today. I thought that we would talk about the mother's diet while she is breastfeeding. A lot of times when a mom is pregnant, she changes her diet um, to eliminate certain things like caffeine, um, to try to eat more clean and healthy. Do you have to continue that type of diet when you are breastfeeding? And just like it's your own choice how you eat when you're pregnant. There are recommendations of healthy eating and drinking plenty of water and that kind of thing. There still is no hard, fast rule of anything that you um, can or cannot. I mean, to an extent, of course, smoking, they don't recommend it. Drinking, definitely not, that kind of thing. So I wanted to talk about the breastfeeding diet and is there anything that you have to avoid eating? Is there anything that you should eat? And I think the number one biggest thing that I see in here is moms talk about feeling like the more milk they drink or the more water they drink, the more milk they'll make. And that is a complete myth you do not have to drink milk to make milk. You also do not need to drink a ton of water in order for your body to make milk. Now, yes, it's important to drink water because your body is going to take care of your baby first and you will suffer the consequences of not having enough water, um, but not so much your baby because your milk supply will, your body will still make that milk. Most likely, if you have a milk supply issue, it won't come from the water. It would come from like water intake. It would come from more like um, breastfeeding habits, certain things that happen, supplementing, different things like that. It usually, and in most cases, does not uh, matter. And it's not water being dehydrated is not the cause. And just to give you an example, now I'm, again, I'm not saying not to drink water because of course it's important to drink water. But, so then the diet itself, um, like I talked about, is there is nothing special. It is important to drink water. It is important to um, make sure that you're hydrated. But you would have to be severely dehydrated in order for your body not to make, for it to affect you. I just you. am going to interrupt the clip for a moment because I had originally put in a example that I did some further research on and it you know I had gotten a little bit of it wrong so I wanted to make sure that I put accurate information in so basically the artwork that you see in the thumbnail is of an Indian woman who had twins and was told by her doctor that she would not be able to breastfeed both uh, that she would not have the milk supply to do so. So she formula fed one and she breastfed the other. And as you can see clearly, the breastfed baby is the healthy baby and the formula fed baby is not. And sadly that baby died not too long after that picture was taken. The reason for using this example is to explain that for a mom, uh, your milk supply is it's got to be a, a drastic situation where you're severely dehydrated or severely malnutritioned in order for you not to be able to feed your baby so example of that artwork is a mom who doesn't have the access to maybe the food that another mom has uh, it's a little tougher for her maybe to eat all those healthier foods to get the calories that she should should get um, and so forth so you can still breastfeed your breast milk is only affected in drastic situations like I said severely malnutritioned or severely um, dehydrated so that was kind of the example I wanted to to insert in here and I'm going to go back to the original clip what I do recommend is not only staying hydrated and keeping you know a container of water around you all the time because you're going to be thirsty it's more for to keep you hydrated to keep you with energy and to take care of your thirst because you're gonna be very thirsty and because the baby's gonna be feeding off of you, you are you have less time for yourself and you're gonna need the energy from that that the water will provide 
so the water is good to get your water intake to just eat a good uh, protein based diet um, dairy you don't have to avoid any food group you just want to make sure that you get high protein so that it kind of helps again you because you're the one that's going to feel the suffering if you don't eat enough of it and the body's going to take what it needs for the baby and then you're the one that's left without so it's kind of a simple subject but there really isn't any special diet that you need to follow when you're breastfeeding there's nothing that you need to avoid so there's really nothing that you need to avoid when you're breastfeeding but let's talk about a situation where you feel that the baby is having some reactions to what you think might be in your diet. So you may start to cut out things. You may say, okay, I think maybe the baby's affected by dairy or the caffeine or, you know, whatever. It might be my coffee or my oatmeal, whatever you, you're, you're feeling. And before I would start really cutting out food, I would look at other things like um, if a baby's spitting up a lot, it could be the baby is getting more milk than what they need or too much of the four milk. And really, as long as the baby is gaining well and is thriving and is happy and content, like there's no health issues, then the spitting up is not a problem. It's not something you should worry about to where you should start to change your diet. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up at part of this video is I've worked with moms who have cut out everything in their diet, literally to the point they're just eating toast and water and still the baby's having this problem. Because really what the problem was, was an oversupply of milk. Um, and the symptoms of oversupply of milk are kind of fall in that category of what a mom might think are allergic reactions or reactions like spitting up, uh, gassiness, colic, diarrhea, green stool, different things that could make a mom think that it's something that she's eating when in reality it's just babies getting a lot more milk than what they need. And I made a video, um, I have a video that talks about that talks about oversupply of milk, talks about those different symptoms. So check into that, look up oversupply and try to, to solve that as a possibility. And if that still isn't, then you know you can move on to yourself. But really the diet, I would say, okay, sometimes a mom will eat peanut butter and she'll notice that when the baby nurses, they're, you know, lips swell a little bit. So that mom might decide to stop eating peanut butter. That's, you know, completely a decision made by the mom because of something she feels is directly related. Swelling of the lips could be a sign of allergic reaction to something, but not necessarily the GI issues. Digestion issues usually come from an oversupply um, of milk, and it can come from dairy, but like I said, if you cut out everything in your diet and the baby's still having these issues, then we have to look somewhere else and not you. And it's not that common. It's more common to have issues with colic and spitting up and reflux and all that than it is an actual, it actually coming from your diet. Like I said, it could be just an oversupply of milk. It could be the baby's sensitivity to digestion, whatever it might be but um, finding ways to resolve it without taking all your food away because you're gonna need it yourself to, to be sustained. So I hope that answers the question. Like I said, it's kind of a simple subject, but I know a lot of moms think about it and wonder, and I just kind of wanted to like put it out there because I think too many moms cut out everything when you don't need to. So that's the video for today. I hope that you guys have a great day and if this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you would like to be notified of any new videos that I put out when I put them out. You guys have a great day and I will see you in my next video.